In the small town of Moscow, Idaho, the violent murders of four college students have the tight-knit University of Idaho community on edge. There's no dark past, there's no dark secrets. We're just trying to process it. It's not a call to and welcome to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we continue to look at the Idaho students' quadruple homicide case. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, uh, just hit the thumbs up and share this. Uh, that could really be helpful so that other people know that we are live right now, they get the notification, and we know we're talking about this case. All right, so I'm just going to put, sorry, sorry, I'm just preparing a few things here. I just also want to see if this light here is in the way. Just wait a bit. Yeah, now. <laughs> Hold on one second. It should be better. Okay. Marco says, I haven't heard about this. This is the third time on this channel now that I'm covering it. So I hope you'll check the other episodes out. But if you missed it, if anyone is here today and you missed the previous episodes, don't worry because we're going to go over everything. Yesterday was kind of touching on the case and seeing what's happening. And there was a press conference. Um, yes. I did watch it, but I was in bed and I was supposed to be asleep, but I did watch it. And what I've done is summarize it for you guys today. So uh, we don't have to go through the whole thing. I've made bullet points for you, which, you know, it's what I like to do. So, yes. Are we ready, everyone? Today's a deep dive. We'll do um, presentation time, map time, and we're going to be looking at the footage as well from that grub truck. Uh, the location of it, the Twitch TV stream, and I've also made sure to shorten it for you so that you can see the most important points of that video. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Carmen says, just realized you had Ted Bundy up there. Damn, is he back or something? <laughs> we hope not. Um, this case just reminds me, there's certain things that remind me of Ted Bundy. If you didn't know, I wrote a book on Ted Bundy, and he is known as the campus killer. So I'm saying a campus killer on the loose? only because, um, well, this took place at a home uh, not far away from the University of Idaho, um, where it appears someone entered the home. They keep referring to it as this person, this individual, the suspect still at large. Um, I mean, murdered four people brutally with a knife, is what the police are saying. And it just reminds me of that time in January of 1978, I believe it was, that Ted Bundy also just entered um, a sorority home and just started murdering people. And many people died that day. I think it was f three or four. I think three and then one survived. But, whew. Okay. So, yes. Terry says, such a crazy, scary case. Okay. So, let's have a look at this. Okay, I hope you can see nicely. I'm going to leave it like this so that I can read the bullet points. I think if I put it like this, I'm in the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we first backtrack to September 12th, 
2022, okay? Two months before this quadruple homicide took place. There was a campus vandal alert after a group of students who were walking on Paradise Path encountered an individual who is not affiliated with the University of Idaho. They got into a verbal altercation. The individual flashed a knife and threatened the group. That individual turned himself into law enforcement. That's what they say. Algoma said that he killed them in their sleep. It's very likely this crime happened um, between three and four in the morning. And we're going to go over all the details. So the vandals is what the, it's like a nickname for the students there, right? At the University of Idaho, from what I understand. So here they say vandal alert, 9, 12, 22 at 8, 5 p.m. The Moscow Police Department received a report that a group of students were walking between the steam plant parking lot, lot number 14, and the Student Recreation Center on Paradise Path. And when we do map time, I'll show you that. And they were threatened by a person with a knife. No individual was harmed in this incident, but campus community members are advised to be cautious. The suspect is described as a white male, 18 to 22 years old, wearing all black clothes and a black baseball cap. So keep that all in mind. Write that down if you've got a notebook. Also, before I get really into this case, just know that this content is for adults only. It is a true crime channel. We're discussing a quadruple homicide. So it's 18 plus, and it is a very gruesome case. And I mean, wow, I'm sharing this information um, in case anyone lives in the area and saw something or knows something, and you can contact the tip line, which I've also included in the description box, as well as in this presentation. So we will have a look at that. Yes, Vandal is the school mascot. Thank you, MJ. Kayla says, I want to get a full layout of the house. We are going to look at a full layout of the house as well. All right. So I can see we're almost now at a, a thousand viewers. Thank you so much, everyone who's here. If you haven't yet subscribed, you just have to subscribe for one minute, and then you can continue chatting with us if you haven't yet. Thank you so much, and welcome to all the new Grisbys. Okay. So they say male, 18 to 22, wearing all black clothes and a black baseball cap. The male was a nondescript, had a, was on a nondescript mountain bike, had a blue backpack, and was last seen heading east on Paradise Path. Now, I will show you the map later, and um, then you'll see from Paradise Path heading east, would actually be going back to, towards, in the direction of that food truck, and we're going to look at the food truck video. I'm sure you've seen it elsewhere as well, but we are going to look at it as well. Um, slowly and see if we spot anything you know that could be helpful we're not here to be like oh my word this guy definitely did it you know or <laughs> uh make comparisons with social media accounts and things like that we're just looking at it to share information in case it jogs anyone's memory or in case anyone that was there that night's like oh my word i don't know that these four people there were actually two um two of the girls were there at this food truck but yeah i saw them there i didn't know they were murdered you see and if they have anything that could help um then hopefully making an episode like this will help. Okay. So they say the, the male was on a nondescript mountain bike, okay, had a blue backpack, was last seen heading east on Paradise Path. The suspect has not been identified and is still at large. Now, this was from September 12th, 2022. You see? You see? You're writing it down? All right. So they say MPD is actively investigating the report. If you have any information regarding this incident, call MPD at 208-882-2677. Keep all doors locked and use caution if you have to go outside. If you see someone matching the description, call 911 immediately and do not approach or attempt to apprehend the suspect. So that's interesting. That's from September. So the, the law enforcement in the press conference said they... They can't say if it's connected or not to this case, but they also didn't rule out the possibility that it's connected. All right. So here they say vandals, victims. Um, well, yeah, they say I made it right. <laughs> here I say on my presentation, November 13th, 2022. So it was in the early hours of the morning, November 13, 2022. So the victims are Kaylee Goncalves. 21, and Maddie Mogan, also 21. They were close like sisters, they were childhood friends, and they both worked at the Mad Greek restaurant. Now keep that in mind as well. All students at were from at the University of Idaho, 
and we'll get deeper into what they were all doing there. And then the other two victims were Ethan Chapman, he's, he was 20, and Zayna, his girlfriend, also 20. There is another article that I've seen, another post, where they said that Maddie and Zayna, yes, it's actually been, it's actually on their own, wait, 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 let me double check this. It's on their own Instagram. Yes. They say um, Maddie and Zayna worked at the Mad Greek restaurant. So speculatively, all three girls worked at the Mad Greek restaurant. You know, like if I'm looking at all the sources, we know for sure, we know for sure that it was um, Maddie and Zayna worked at the Mad Greek restaurant. Kaylee, I'm not 100% sure, but that is what's being quoted elsewhere. But, you know, sometimes um, it's wrong on wherever, at the sources. So there's that. The reason I say that is just, you know, you just don't know if it's someone that watched the girls for a while at the restaurant or if there's any connection there. You just don't know, right? Okay. So we're going to I see all your guys' chats. I'm just working through the presentation. Okay. Kaylee Goncalves, 21, had a job in Texas lined up and was a general studies major. And Maddie Mogan, 21, was in her senior year studying marketing at the University of Idaho. Zayna, 20, was a junior at the university majoring in marketing. And Ethan, 20, a triplet from Conway, Washington, was majoring in sport and tourism management. Zayna and Maddie both worked at a Mad, at the Mad Greek restaurant. Ethan and Zayna were in a relationship. And Ethan's mom said, so there's this full interview that I've watched um, with Ethan's parents, which we can look at if we have some time. I do have it prepared if we do have time to look at that. Um, so Ethan's mom said that he was found in a room with Zayna because law enforcement didn't want to say where the victims were found in the house. But Ethan's mom said, well, they were both found in the same room. He was spending the night um, over at their house, you know, to sleep over um, at his girlfriend's place. And in the house, there were five female roommates. Three were murdered. Ethan was murdered. And the other two, it's a multiple, multi-story house. So from what I understand, the other two were on the upper level. And possibly fast asleep. I'm not too sure. Nancy Grace said that Ethan was the victim discovered first on the second floor. You know? So anyway, we'll get more into it. I'm just giving you bits as we go. Um, Granny T, no. It's not her ex. Law enforcement has cleared that up. It's not her ex-boyfriend in the video. Okay. The law, enforce law enforcement said they've cleared the ex-boyfriend. Okay, so if we look here, Mad Greek, this is the post I was talking about. They say, it is with a broken heart and deep sadness to share with you that we have lost two of our own here at Mad Greek. Zaina and Maddie have been servers here for several years and brought so much joy to our restaurant and all those they encountered. Maddie was also the face behind our social media pages. With this incredible loss, we have shut down to process and grieve. Our deepest sympathies go out to all of the friends and families of Zaina, Maddie, Ethan, and Kaylee. We as a team offer our support to anyone in need at this time. Jackie and all of the Mad Greek family, you'll be greatly missed. Thank you for being part of our family or team and for helping me so much over the years until we meet again. Love the world's best boss. <laughs> okay. So on the right hand side, I have a picture there. The picture I showed earlier, actually, this one right here, that picture was taken the, the day before, you know, on, on the 12th, or it was at least uploaded on that day, which is scary to think about. That's the last known picture of them all alive. Wow. So what I did was I went to uh, one of the victim's Instagram pages and I saw, I saw the picture here that they uploaded and I've just blurred out the faces of the other two surviving roommates. Uh huh. Okay. So, man, that must be traumatic as hell. So, Maddie, Kaylee, Zayna, and two other female roommates lived at 1122 Queen Road, Moscow, Idaho, 
and Ethan was spending the night over with Zayna, and he was part of the Signa Kai fraternity, which was just 500 feet away. Sure. The picture on the bottom left is very scary. I mean, law enforcement said that they got the 911 call, and they were told that there was one unconscious individual. And when they went to the scene, they discovered a bloodbath. It was there was blood everywhere, is what they said. And I mean, you could see it here, even as the Daily Mail said, oozing out the side of the house, which I'm like, oh my word. Sure. So yeah, Ethan, his fraternity was just 500 feet away. And they're still processing the scene. They're also looking through the trash to look for the weapon. They haven't got a weapon yet or the suspect. So on Saturday, November 12th, November, yeah, November 12th, 2022, to Sunday, November 13th, 2022, because we're looking at what they did in police are building a timeline of how the night unfolded. So what we know so far is that Ethan and Zayna went to a party on campus. Maddie and Kaylee were seen on a Twitch TV live stream getting food at Grub Truckers at 1.43 a.m. on Sunday, November 13th, 2022. So that's like quarter to two in the morning, and they were murdered between three and four. So this could be, well, it is at this stage, the last known footage of them alive. They ordered a $10 portion of carbonara and left at approximately 1.53 a.m. So we will look at that footage. The reason I'm pointing, um, you could see the arrows that I made there, Maddie, Kaylee, and there's this guy that arrived with them. And we're going to take a closer look at that now, and we will also look at the video footage. So just hang in there for that. We've got lots to look at today. The police have confirmed that the guy in the video who arrived with the girls and waited while they got their food is not an ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend of one of the victims has been cleared. They do want to know who this person is. If you have any tips or know anything, contact the tip line 208-883-7180. They have not named the person as a suspect. We're not speculating he's a suspect. We're just looking at this footage, and I must say it's very interesting because, of course, he doesn't order any food. He walks in with them, which we'll look at, and then when they leave, they kind of, what it looks like, make a break for it, you know, like, <laughs> okay, let's just take a photo of you and run, basically, and he looks at them, and we'll look at the footage, as I say, then you'll understand if you haven't seen it yet. And then he actually goes in a different direction. If they were going towards the left, he goes towards the right. But it is interesting, nonetheless, um, to see. And even if he turns out to not have anything to do with this, it would still be interesting to hear his side of the story of, well, what were you doing there? <laughs> what was going on? What were they talking about? What happened? Did you see anyone else? You know? So uh, the food truck is a four-minute drive from their home. Kaylee's sister said that they had Ubered, and the murders took place between 3 and 4 a.m. It would be a 22-minute walk. So, you know, I, I was speculating to myself, like, did they walk or did they drive? But then I saw the interview with Kaylee's sister, and she said that they used an Uber Right. Stefan says, this is my suspect, number one. It is very suspect, and we will look at it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we say, howdy here, says, sure, looks like they ditched him. Mm -hmm. Looks like a stalker. Does the roadie takes branch back to the one they are on? That's what we got to look at on the maps, right? Okay. <laughs> Jessica says, all get on the sus bus. Mm -hmm. Twain's Lure, CA. I hope I'm saying that all right. Twain's Lure. Twain's Lure. Okay, CA. Maddie points at that guy in the hat at one part of the video and says something to him. Yep. Okay. Um, mods, just let me know if I need to slow it down or anything like that. Let me really look. Okay, slowing it down. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. One second. If you remember, then don't worry. Slow mode does not apply. Also, thanks to all the members who joined me for a live stream yesterday. A pajama party. Okay, so there we go. We've got slow mode on. So, okay, so we will look at this footage. I'm just showing you some images here so that we could first look at that, all right, and work through the presentation timeline and all that, and then we'll look at the footage frame by frame. 
the manager said that they were slightly intoxicated. So here I'm looking at pictures of this guy, you know. I'm just saying, especially, I don't know who this guy is. And he, it seems to me like the girls would sort of, I mean, you, you've been in this situation, right? Be like, oh my word, I just want to get away from this person. I don't know why he's following me. I don't know. It felt like that to me. It could, it might not be, but it just seemed like they were sort of trying to um, like walk around and, you know, their body language was like, oh my word, like back to him. Not really wanting to be there with him is what it seemed like. And then they, they split, you know, they weren't like, oh shame, we left him behind. No, no, they like, they went for it. So, of course, with the suspect that they described from the September 12th altercation, you know, when he, when somebody threatened a group of students with a knife, I'm like, huh, he was dressed in all black and, you know, had the baseball cap. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it's interesting. I mean, he's got a, a cap on and all that. So you just don't know. You just don't know. Yes, only two of the victims are on camera here, um, Kaylee and Maddie. The other two, Ethan and Zayna, were at a party on campus and then they went home. So when these two girls went home, they were all at home around quarter to two in the morning. All right. Okay. So we continue. So yeah, I just zoomed in quite a bit here. Just so we can see. Maybe someone recognizes him, you know? Maybe someone who lives in the area, goes to the university or whatever, be like, I know that guy, okay. Or maybe the guy himself. If you're watching and this was you, then contact law enforcement so they could clear up what was happening here. Okay, according to Kaylee's sister, they followed the buddy system, which means they stuck together. They had an Uber ride. They let their dog out for potty and they locked their doors. Law enforcement says when they arrived on the scene the next day, which they only got called just before noon, they said the door was still open is how they worded it. But Kaylee's sister says they lock their doors. So I don't know if she, how she knows that or, you know, if the other roommates told her or I don't know, but she said they locked their doors. In the early stages of the investigation, the mayor said that this could be a burglary gone wrong or a crime of passion. But the thing is, law enforcement said nothing, yeah, nothing was taken from the house. So I guess that could be a burglary gone wrong, but it seems a little bit more personal than that, right? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, 4x4 Explorers, for your super sticker. 1.53 a.m., you can see the girls leaving. And you can see him like looking around, being like, wait, what? And we will look at the footage. And then he then he then he follows them but turns in a different direction. So yes. Okay. On Sunday, November 13th at 1158 a.m., so just before noon, the Moscow Police Department rushed to the home where a 911 call had stated that there was an unconscious individual. Now, at the press conference, uh, one of the media representatives asked um, the police chief, isn't that a bit odd to say an unconscious individual when it's such a scene, like unconscious, like this person was deceased and they'd all been attacked with a knife and as some have worded it, left to bleed out. And I'm like, oh my word. So that is a little bit strange that they say there's an unconscious individual. The house is a six bedroom, three bathroom home with five female tenants or roommates, and the other two roommates were not injured. Um, upon arrival, you see, we always have to have one typo, just one. <laughs> upon arrival, they discovered the four murdered victims, particularly on the upper floors of the house, is what they say. So I'm not too sure where the surviving victims were. If you know, let me know. I saw someone earlier say, you actually think that they were in the basement. I haven't seen anyone say where they were, because law enforcement won't say. All I've seen um, is Ethan's mom saying that Ethan and Zayna were in the same room. And I saw Nancy Grace say that Ethan was discovered first. So that's all we know, really. Um, law enforcement, of course, doesn't want to say too much because it's part of the investigation. Yeah, Terry says, why didn't they say anything about blood? So strange. It's very strange. I don't know. So... They believe that all four victims were stabbed with an edged weapon such as a knife and have been asking local stores about a, I don't know if you say just car bar, Rambo-styled knife, pictured here as an example. 
the police said that they are not just focusing. I like the way they worded that. They said, we are not just focusing on the roommates, but also who comes and goes from this residence. So it could be, you know, they, they are, just to clear everyone's mind, they are um, questioning the surviving roommates as well as whoever comes and goes from the residence. And, of course, this could be a complete stranger as well. All right, so we will look at more information um, about the knife as well. I will show you an article about it. The trash was taken to a local garbage depot where hazmat suited cops were seen sifting through garbage bags in a screened off shed. So they are digging through all the trash in the area to see if they could find bloody clothes or the weapon or any type of evidence that could help them solve this case. Now here is the press conference summary. So if you didn't see the press conference, it is out there. It's available if you just say Moscow PD, Moscow PD um, press conference or Idaho students press conference. I wanted to give you bullet points because we've got so much to go over today that I think this could be helpful as well, um, you know, just to summarize it. So they said the FBI are involved and 25 investigators, Moscow PD and Idaho State PD. Ethan and Zena were at a party on campus, and Maddie and Kylie were at a downtown um, bar. It was actually the truck area, food truck, and they arrived home sometime after 1.45 a.m. Sorry, I just had to <clears throat> clear my throat. Okay, so they say the four bodies were discovered inside the home. Sources say there was blood everywhere and that the victims were left to bleed out. They believe they were stabbed. A weapon has not been located and neither has a suspect. There was no sign of forced entry into the residence. The door was still open when they arrived on scene. Based on details at the scene, investigators believe it is an isolated, targeted attack on victims. They believe the individual, they keep saying, they believe the individual is still out there. They're looking for that individual and they said a person um, out there committed these four horrible crimes. Now they cannot say that there's no threat to the community because for a while now they've been saying there's no threat to the community. This is an isolated, targeted attack. And now they're like, well, we can't really say. Rather stay safe. They've got campus security and all that. But another reason I put Ted Bundy on the thing is because you just don't know if it's campus security itself. <laughs> Ted Bundy once volunteered to be part of campus security, you know. So you just don't know who did this and why they did it. Um, also, if he was using a knife like that, I mean, and stabbing four people. I also don't know why the dog wasn't barking or if no one heard barking or what happened. But if he was, um, if he, if this person stabbed four individuals like that and left such a scene, it's it would be um, plausible to say that he, you know, oh man, I hate talking about this graphic stuff, but um, oftentimes when people are stabbing people, then the, then their hands get all slippery from the blood and stuff, and then and then they cut their own hands. So he could have injuries. We saw that in the um, Orsaya Gull case, remember that one, where the guy then went to a local uh, hospital to have his hand looked at. So even that, if you are in the area and you work at a hospital and someone recently came in and it's cuts on their hands that could be of interest to police so call that in and that would also then have his dna left behind because then his his blood dna would be left behind so that could at least help unless of course he's not in the system at all but either way at least then they will have dna okay so yeah so everyone needs to stay vigilant in the area a lot of people have um gone away for a bit, they say for the Thanksgiving break, but also just to get away, go home to their families if they live um, further away, just to stay safe. The Twitch TV video, law enforcement said it helps them to establish a timeline. There's no indication that there was a party at the home that night. It was not a hostage situation, and the police are not divulging who made the 911 call. The autopsies will confirm if the same weapon was used on all four victims. I just want to say, when they say police are not divulging who made the 911 call, I see a little bit of like a broken telephone going on, where they said at the press conference, 
they are not divulging who made the 911 call and people are taking that the way that they, I can't remember exactly how they phrase it now, and saying, oh yeah, because yeah, the call wasn't made at the time of the murders or shortly after it was made at noon the next day. So they, the, the two roommates, the two surviving roommates were not injured and did not call, make the call at the time of the attacks is what they, how they kind of worded it. And now people are saying that it's not one of the two roommates who called, but we don't know that. It could be one of the two surviving roommates who called 911. The autopsies will confirm if the same we weapon was used on all four victims, which I would assume it was, but we can't assume, we've got to wait. Nothing was missing from the home. Investigators are also looking into all social media interactions and interviewing anyone who knows anything, and they said with the help of the FBI. And there will be an official candlelight vigil on campus on November 30th, 2022, um, between or well, starting around 5 or 5.30 p.m. Two other vigils have already been held for the victims at um, Boise, I believe, University, and Coeur d'Alene. So, man, the community is shocked absolutely shocked as are we all over the world looking at this case it's so brutal and seems so yes targeted but also it's got like an impulsive vibe to it it's just so horrendous you know i don't know if this we always try to learn from these cases what could they have done differently you know i mean this is terrible Okay, so here's the tip line, 208-883-7180. So if you worked at a hospital and someone came in recently, right after this these murders, and had a cut-up hand, or if you saw anything, or if you were at the food truck and you remember anything, or if you know the guy, or if you are the guy, contact law enforcement. Here's the tip line, okay? Carmen says, yes, uh, something like something in a horror movie. This one is nuts, right? Yeah, it reminds me of like Scream or something like that. SK says, how did the two surviving roommates not hear this attack and call 911 until hours later? So we can have a look at the house layout. Um, they could have, I'm just going to throw out some ideas. Just know I'm speculating now. This is not anything I've heard. But what if they had been drinking themselves and were passed out drunk and didn't hear anything, like fast asleep? What if they had AirPods or earphones on and didn't hear anything? I'm just saying, um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's I've also been wondering, like, how did they? But maybe we just don't know what happened there, right? And we'll look at the house, the layout of the house. What do you think? Yes, Janice Peace says, or a urgent care or freestanding clinic. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Okay, we are going to look at footage from the bar as well. I've got lots of things to show you, so just stand by. Let me... Yeah, I think I played this one. So let's remove that one so we know where we're at. I just want to show you quickly the layout of the house. Okay. Uh, my bad. Go back. Yes. Okay. Hold on. I got this and we make it full screen. And we hide this. Okay. So here is the house. Oh, 23 or 23. All right, and we've seen them also posing on Instagram on this very um, deck. So this is on the bottom floor, six bedrooms, three bathrooms. Some pictures of inside the house. Remember, I really hate that I have to say this. If you're a YouTuber or a true crimer, a viewer, subscriber, member, whatever, anyone watching this, do not go to this house and harass the two surviving victims. Don't go to the, the university. Don't call potential suspects. I don't know, you know what I mean? It's not, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I don't think we have to say that really in this community, but let's not do it anyway. Right, okay. So you could just see the, the house here. It's a very beautiful house, my goodness. got the washer and dryer there's uh we'll look at the house from the outside too the middle level and yep okay am i going too fast 
So here you can see the outside of here as well. I'm just showing you so that when I show you on the map, you can see it's the same house. I've been <laughs> comparing, you know, the fence and the this and the that and everything to make sure this is the house, but this is the house. So this is what the house looks like inside. So there are um, sliding doors and things like this, which unfortunately are not very, I come from South Africa. So we are like, do you guys know what a trolley door is? <laughs> Do you guys know what a trolley door is? <laughs> it's like a, a slamming metal gate that we pretty much all have in South Africa to like have a really safe. We'd have it in front of these like sliding doors. We have lots of security, of course. We've got electric fencing, barbed wire, everything in South Africa, and trolley doors. So even this, like if I moved in there, I'd be like, damn, we need to we need to put the trolley door on there or like a gate door or something, because these sliding doors are not very secure. So I don't know, the person could have gotten in through a sliding door or I don't know where. Yeah, you could see these levels here. So I'm not too sure. I don't know exactly where all the five roommates were staying. I just know that three of them were murdered as well as Ethan, who was staying over. You guys are saying patio doors? Trelly door. <laughs> Princess Skywalker. I don't think us Grizzlies are doing that. We prefer to snark in our PJs with you. Yes. Grizzly real estate crime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True crime. Real estate now. Now it's real estate time. <laughs> okay. Man. Sorry, I'm not laughing at the case. I'm laughing at that comment because it's just, it makes me laugh. Just real estate. We've got a time for everything. We've got presentation time, map time. Yeah, real estate time. We're looking at everything here. Sure. So I don't know where Ethan was discovered, if he was discovered first. I'm not too sure where everyone was in this house. Law enforcement hasn't said, but this is the house. Okay. So then next, I just want to do that. Um, don't worry. We are going to look at the video. As I said, stand by everyone. I just want to quickly power through this. Here they talk about the, the knife. So here they say, Moscow police appear to be searching for a Rambo-style knife involved in the killing of four University of Idaho students, a store manager said Wednesday. Scott E. Jutter, general manager of Moscow Building Supply, told the Idaho statesman that police have visited the store more than once to ask whether the retailer sold anyone Kabar brand knives, which are also known as Kabar or Kabar or K-Bar knives. K-Bar. K-Bar of Olean New York manufacturers military grade blades that were originally designed for use by American troops in World War II. That is very scary. They did say edged, yeah. They said an edged weapon such as a knife. So I don't know if edged means serrated, but they said edged. An edged weapon such as a knife. And this is what they've been looking for. Jutta said that a police officer stopped by the home improvement store and lumber yard off North Main Street in Moscow to speak with him on Monday. They were specifically asking whether or not we carry K-bar style knives, which we do not, uh, Jutta said in an interview. If we did, we could have reviewed surveillance footage, but it wasn't something I could help them with. Jutta said he's familiar with a familiar, uh, with a military style weapon, even though his store doesn't sell it. Yes. Kanani Miranda says, what's scary, if this is like Ted Bundy, WSU is very close by. I would definitely be vigilant even at WSU right now if this person is caught soon. I agree. And I do think everybody should be hyper vigilant. Uh, one of the students, so not involved in this case at all, someone, someone's daughter, a, a former police officer's daughter is at this university. And he made a statement saying, no, everyone shouldn't be like, just, just chill. No, everyone's safe. It's fine. You should be hyper vigilant right now. Don't walk around with your AirPods in, like unaware, you know, um, make sure you're looking around. Call 911 if you think anything suspicious. Rather be safe than sorry. Right? Yes, Richard says, maybe a knife collector. Maybe. What else do I have here for you? Oh, this is the, I found the website for the Grub Truck. And they've got a Twitch TV channel. So I don't know if any of you guys are on Twitch. I'm sure some of you are, right? I'm not on Twitch, but Twitch is kind of like YouTube. A lot of gamers on there, but they stream, uh, it looks like every night from when they're working, they stream to Twitch TV. And then, I don't know, I find it quite interesting because then they talk to people like on the stream and they 
it's kind of like super stickers and chats and things going on and they talk to that and people can select songs and all that kind of stuff on their twitch channel it looks it looks pretty fun actually but thank goodness they do that because now there's actual footage which could help build the timeline in the case and shows us i mean it could show us a potential suspect so it's called uh, the, the the grab truck here's the menu which i didn't see the carbonara on here i don't see carbonara but anyway she did order um Kaylee ordered carbonara for ten dollars. She initially tried to use her points, um, so I think they go here quite often. And then the manager said, "Oh, you don't have enough points." And she said, "That's okay." And then she paid with uh, ten dollars. And also, when just so just I'm jogging my memory of everything I want to tell you, when we look at the footage, uh, when the owner says or manager, I think he's the manager, when he says, "Welcome back," he did say later in an interview, which I think it was with Daily Mail that he actually thought there were two other girls who'd been there earlier that night. So when he says, welcome back, he did say he confused them initially with two other girls who'd already been there. And so he's got like, oh my word, welcome back, you know? Um, but it could also just be as regular customers. But that is what he said in an interview. That's what's been quoted. Okay, let's see what uh, GWOT alumni says. K-bars are common in the US. The knife Rambo used and part of teenage boy culture. If you have one, you are cool. <laughs> they are massive and heavy. Yeah. Wait, let's see the question. Alexa says, why did they only kill those four and not all there? I don't know. Maybe the other two were lucky. Maybe he didn't find them. We don't know. There could be so many reasons. I mean, same as I say, with Ted Bundy, some survived. You know? Marie says that particular knife might be the key to finding the killer. So we'll look at that. I've also got all the social media here from the girls, which we won't go too much into because I don't want people. We're going to look at the map time too. Um, there is also a GoFundMe that I see for Maddie and Kaylee, two of the victims. And they say, God just received more angels in Maddie, May, and Kaylee. Fly high and be free, you beautiful souls. Our hearts are so broken with the tragedy and loss of the U of I students. These amazing girls were so kind, so sweet, so loving to all. Donations will go to Maddie, Maddie's and Kaylee's families. So if you want to donate to that, I'll put the link in my description box. Uh, so there's that GoFundMe. And then we already looked at the Mad Greek restaurant. And also, wait for it, one more thing. Wait, where is it? We've looked at that. Damn it, what was it? Oh, yeah, this one. Autumn is the youngest sister of Kaylee. And she put out this Instagram post that says, I cannot stress this enough. Please call in any information you have to 208-882-COPS, even if you think it's been called in, that it is nothing serious or that it had nothing to do with my sisters and their friends. Call it in. If you have friends, family, or loved ones in Moscow, our family encourages you to get them home. Police say isolated, targeted attack, but it is isolated until it isn't. No one is in custody, therefore no one is safe. Whoever did this to my sisters, Maddie and Kaylee, Zaina and Ethan, is still out there. And if it is sick enough to murder four sweet, innocent humans so brutally, he is sick enough to do it to anyone else. Our family was dreading the answer for how, and we all knew that no matter the answer, we wouldn't like it. But we got back the worst possible answer, the most gruesome way. One person against four. This person is dangerous and he's not in custody. Which is why I do think that they were probably sleeping. Because one person with the knife, I don't know how he could control four people. I mean, we talk about the Delphi case. One person with a gun controlling two girls. Now it's one person with a knife with three girls and a guy. So I'm pretty sure, you know, in my opinion, I think they were all fast asleep when this person entered the home. Or at least in their, in their rooms. Lynn, thank you so much. Read up on the Brentwood killings. Okay, house party with university students killed by their friend with a knife. He killed all five of them. He was the son of a cop. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And so just to complete this, and then we'll look at the video. They say, um, one person against four. This person is dangerous, and he is not in custody. How police say no threat makes no sense. My sisters, Maddie and Kaylee, did everything right. They went out together, they locked their doors, they were smart, and they were fighters, and this still happened. No one is safe. Please get your loved ones home. Maddie, May, and Kaylee, I hope you two know that we'll never stop fighting for you guys, just as you wouldn't have stopped for any of us. I love you two more than 
any words could ever describe. I promise you to Zaina and Ethan justice. If you can afford to donate, the link is in my bio and currently on my story. We're going to put together something huge and beautiful for them. So I'm not too sure what they're putting together for them. As I say, I put the link to the GoFundMe in my description box if you would like to donate to that. And yeah, just reading these words, I mean, I agree with that. No one is safe until they catch that guy, you know. So, yes. Okay. So we've looked at all of that. Do you want to look at the video now and then map time or map time and the video? I don't know which one to do right now. Let's, you know what I'm going to do? I know you guys are dying to see the video, but let's just do a very quick map time, okay? Just so I can show you so you could visualize where everything is, especially because we're now going to look at the food truck video. So let me take this off and let's do this. Okay, so if we go here, I'll just show you this and then we're gonna look at the, the food truck video. All right, so this, down here, it's not 712 Queen Road, it's just, it is here, it's um, 1122, there you go. This is the house, okay. So I don't know if I can move that, there. but this is, the, this is the house right here, 1122 King Road, so, here is King Road. It's actually Queen Road, but it's interesting how it registers as King Road. You see, even if you hover over it, that's the address. Here's King Road, Queen Road going loop around here. And that is the house, okay? And then if we look at where they were last seen on surveillance footage at 1.53 in the morning, and they say they were murdered between 3 and 4, it was actually, hold on. Where's this garden place? I'll show you also how close the university is. Uh, the university is right here. All right. And then there's Mad Greek. And how close is this other place? Stand by. I'm just looking at my own one. Garden Lounge, that one. Where are you? <laughs> Moscow Bagel Deli. There's the Mad Greek restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So Mad Greek is where Zayna and Maddie worked. One article also said Kaylee worked there, but I'm not convinced. I'm not sure if she worked there too. Let's quickly do this. Okay. All right. So here's the Mad Greek restaurant. And here by this garden lounge, you see the garden lounge area? Look, wait, let's just put this away. The food truck says they are usually right by this garden lounge. Look how close that is to where they work as well, which is why I was saying, well, if they work there and someone was stalking them for a while, maybe obsessing over them for a while, you don't know. And I say them because, yes, four people were murdered. But sadly, two or three of them could be collateral damage. We just don't know. It would be really weird to target four people for what? I was trying to think of, like, for what? So a more plausible speculation in my mind would be Okay, you were like obsessing over one or two of the girls and then watching them for a while, maybe? Unless it's just someone that was walking around there. But anyway, the restaurant where they worked is this Mad Greek restaurant there. The food trucks um, parked right here outside the garden lounge is what they say. And then if we just zoom out here, look at this Paradise Path, how close that is. And they say that suspect on September 12th was heading eastward after having an altercation with a group of people on Paradise Path. So Paradise Path is here and here. You see? Um, so the thing is, if if they encountered this person there and then, then they walked eastward, I mean, <laughs> they're walking back in that direction towards this this area, this general area. I mean, it could just be eastward to there or whatever, but I'm just saying it is eastward to this area. And we don't know if that guy, does he, I mean, the main question there is, does he have a bike? Or did he get to this place on a bike? Like, how did he, 
how did he intercept the girls? Because they we're gonna look at the footage and you'll see the way they arrive. It's like it looks like he arrived with them, but then they very quickly, the way they like spin around and the way they are is kind of trying to get away from him, right? Sarah says serial killer vibes for me. Rob says that's really close, right? Patty says the killer might not have expected the boyfriend to be there. Very good point. Yeah, he really might not have expected the boyfriend to be there and may have not known about the other two roommates either. Uh, did the person break in? We don't know. There's no sign of uh, forced entry. I just want to check. I didn't realize there's so many people here now. So just see if it's slow enough. Okay, okay, okay. I think we've got a lot of people in here. Thank you so much, everyone, for for joining. Really appreciate it. I'm just going to make it 100, 100 seconds. Okay. All right, so but you can see how how close everything is. The where they worked, the food truck area, this garden lounge area, Paradise Path, where there was a group of students that encountered someone with a knife, threatening them with a knife, and there was a that vandal um, vandals alert on September twelfth that was there and heading eastwards, and then their home, which they actually Ubered to get home, you know, um, and the home is right here. So it's a four minute Uber from the food truck place. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, I just quickly, yeah, a Bundy wannabe. I just quickly want to see something and then let me put this video on for you guys. So you could, at least you've got the map to visualize now, right? You could see how close everything is and the University of Idaho. I mean, it's, um, here's the admin building. There's also Chick-fil-A. So you can see everything is in proximity to each other right there. All right. So what I'm going to do is take this off. Then I just want to prepare myself here while I look up something like this. Let me put this on. We're getting to the video now. It's okay. It's all just shocking and scary. I spoke with Kaylee Gonzalez's sister, Olivia, who described the last night of the students' lives. My sisters did everything right. They went out in the buddy system. They went out together. They Ubered out. They stopped and got food they ubered home they let their dog out to go potty and then they locked their house up they did everything right and this still happened we're mad um we're really mad we know that there is someone who is responsible for this we know that there's someone who saw something um and no one's talking we're not getting any answers and we're not gonna settle for that no it's amusing though it's fun to watch other people right, be have a good night. Okay, so stand by. We've got to stop it right there. Um, I just also want to tell you about this Ted Bundy one. So if you haven't read my book, I have a Ted Bundy book and it's all in there. But just to quickly, um, they say the Kai Omega sorority house that Ted Bundy terrorized in 1978 still stands today. Okay. And... Bundy escaped from prison and made his way to Florida in the 1970s. He broke into the sorority home, viciously murdering Margaret Bowman and Lisa Levy and attacking two other victims at the sorority house, Karen Chandler and Kathy Kleiner, who both survived. So there, four people were attacked, two survived, two did not. And you just don't know if someone has a, you know, if they're collecting knives like this and you just don't know. What if they're, I mean, like a true crime nut, like totally fantasizing about being like a Ted Bundy or being a Ted Bundy 2.0. You just don't know what their motive is. We don't know at this point. Right? So that's what I'm referring to. I'm just checking if there's anything else. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm referring to. Okay. So now I'm just going to, let's just take this back um, a second. How can I take it back? Yeah, right there, right there. Okay. So. Watch as they walk in. It's going to be on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Let me actually just take this branding off. Just hold on one second so that we can make it real nice and clear. Okay, so here. I'm going to settle for that. So top right-hand corner, okay? You see that, that girl there in the white hoodie? That's not one of the victims. They're going to walk in right behind her. All right, so here we go. Watch this. No, it's amusing though. It's fun to watch other people right. do. Right there, look at him. Like he's right between them. It's just, it's just the way that he's moving here. It's almost like he, like intercepted them right there. 
you know? I don't know. They say arrive together. This doesn't look very together. Yes, of course. Generally, Jenny, it's all speculation at the moment. Yes, it is. Yeah, and it might be, exactly, PT Notam, it might be a Bundy fanatic. And in that case, then, yeah, everybody be hyper vigilant. It's not like, I mean, the police also don't want to scare everybody, but rather be safe. Be safe. Lock your doors. Um, get extra security on your doors if you can. Um, oh, yeah, Tracy says, my, my daughter refuses to Uber alone. Yep. Okay, so so just look at him, and yes, the he looks very suspect, says Rob. Twain's Lurcia says, hoodie guy is a black hat, the suspect in September walking and threatening other students had a black hat. The the one in September was wearing all black clothing, and yes, had a black uh, baseball cap, well, had a baseball cap as well, and the September dude had a backpack, so I can't see a backpack on this guy, and we're not saying that this is the same guy, and we're also not saying that this guy is guilty of anything. We're just looking at this point. I just feel protective when I see this because it feels to me like these two girls didn't really want this guy, Ryan, and you'll see more. As we look at more, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so here we go. Have a good night. Bye. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. I think I would like the, um, the car. No, she blew okay. you up, bro. Yeah, they both. I feel a mask. Okay, so can you see... I mean, the guy is standing right there in the background. I almost want to play this on the other screen. Do you want me to play and point, or can you see? Um, he's standing in the background there with that white hoodie, the cap, brown jacket, and he's now just kind of like uh, trying to blend in with the other guys, but he doesn't know any of these people by the looks of it. You see what I mean? He just like walked right through them to that back corner there, and now he's like looking at these guys and... Yeah, they were trying to ditch him what it looks like, and, and he's got his hands in his pocket. And he's just trying to blend in, is what it looks like. Okay, but let me know what you think. Uh, if I have, like, a free grub tuck on my, like, nap? Oh, yep, uh, so what you want to do is, we'll actually, uh, do this. I'm about to make you show, I'm to show you your work in the gym, but you're still light. Cool, you thank you. Absolutely. How many more do you need? Uh... That's the second one? Awesome. Don's mom was... Oh, wait. Yeah, one more. One more. Maybe here. I didn't have a food one. It's right here. Um, and then what was the mac? Uh, don't forget to move the spoon. The carbonara. The carbonara. Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it. Look, it's just at the back there on his phone. Can you guys see or do you need me to point out things? I just want to know. Let's just see if I can start. Just hold on. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Where is it? Open it. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'll see it now. Okay, wait. I just want to... Okay. Sorry. I'm trying something new here. Let's just try this thingy. The pen. Yes. We want that. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. You want me to, you want me to point it out? Point out. Okay, okay. So, hold on. Let me remove this from the screen for a second, and then we're going to use a new tool that I've, that Mr. Grizzly showed me. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> so just hold on. Um, it would be this video over here. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Stand by, everyone. And now, if I go forward, this is actually going to be quite cool to look at. Okay, this, and we're going to go full screen. And then we'll grab our pen. Okay. Wait, this is going to be quite difficult, actually. Hold on. Um, it would be this one. Yes. Okay, now let's try the pen. Is it this? Here he is. Ooh, nice. That's what we're looking at. <laughs> yeah, I've got a new cool tool, Richard. <laughs> so there is the guy, and here are the girls. So you got to watch this guy. This is actually so fun. Oh, my word. Like, if you guys get me started on this pen, look at me go. Look at me go. <laughs> Just 
Just hold on one second. So if you see, he walked in like this. He just like walked in, intercepted them while they were kind of like two of them. He just went like, ding, you know, and then they, they were like, damn, they walked this way. And then he just stands here the whole time. He just stands here watching them the whole time. It's so weird. Okay. So we'll do this. Are we ready to play some more of it? Okay, here we go. Now you know what to look at. Okay, let's see the entrance again. Wait. Here we go. Here we go. Watch. No, it's amusing, though. It's fun to watch other people dance. Right. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. I think I would like the, um, the um, the car. No, okay. Yeah, they both. I feel a mask. But if I have like a free drug tuck on my like mask. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so what you want to do is. So you can see now, Kaylee is ordering the carbonara. Okay. $10 carbonara, trying to use the points and everything. Ooh, let's get our pen again. Pen time. Look at this guy. He's definitely looking in her direction. I think he was watching her the most. I'm not sure. He's watching both girls. But she's ordering the carbonara. And as um, Maddie walks, because she sees a friend of hers. So she walks in. Maddie was standing right next to uh, Katie over here. She walks this way. And this camera, I've just zoomed in so we could look at this whole scene. But there's like four views on the original Twitch stream. Um, and so he's looking at her. He's like, oh, damn, where's she going now? right? You like the marking of the screen, you guys. <laughs> I love stuff like this. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm just going to go back for one second here so you can see what I mean. Watch him. Watch him. I think I would like the, um, the no, 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 okay. You up from love. Yeah, they both I feel a yep. Uh, so what you want to do is we'll actually uh, do this. Cool. You Thank you. Absolutely. How many more do you need? Uh, that's the second one. Awesome. Don's mom. Oh, wait. Yeah, one more, one more. Maybe here. I didn't have a free one. Right here. Did you see for a second, um, Maddie looks at him? She kind of looks around. You know, she's very situationally aware. I find she's like looking around everywhere. I'm not saying anyone else isn't. I'm just can see she's watching. She is watching everything. She left to go say hi to someone else, came back, and then she's looking at him. Now he's just pretending to look down and be on his phone. You see? So I just, yeah, he's a bit of a red flag. If he turns out to not be a suspect, great. But if he is watching this, if anyone was there, because you can see there's quite a lot of people there. If you were there and you know this guy, if at least law enforcement can clear him, that would be great, you know? They need to talk to this guy at least is what we're saying. All right, so let's go. Um, and then what was the Mac? Uh, don't forget to remove the carbon. The carbon of Mac of the Week. Here, I'll grab it for Excellent. you. Excellent. And then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like you do not quite have enough points yet. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, $10. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a big burrito pork here for you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where'd the pen go? Yeah, where'd the pen go? Okay. So the two girls... They go off screen now because they're walking towards where that other friend was. And we'll change views now, but watch him. You still know what we're looking at, right? If you're only joining now, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Let's do the pen thing again. Watch this guy right here. Here he is. Okay, we're going to watch him and see what he's doing now. Okay. Oh, guys. Look, as soon as they go, he goes. He's not ordering food, right? <laughs> Thank you, Golden Fire. Just when I thought your streams couldn't get any better than they already are. Mr. G gives you a new tool. I just saw him fiddling around with this thing on a map the other day. I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> what is that that you are using? He's like, what? This is a pen. And I'm like, what? I want the pen. I want the pen. <laughs> I've never had siblings, but sometimes <laughs> I feel like I understand sibling rivalry when I <laughs> look at Mr. Grizzly and what he has. I'm like, I want that too. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'll just download it. I'm like, give it to me now. <laughs> so, yes, 
Exactly. Thank you, Lieutenant Peter Pranzo, NYPD, Harlem Raiders. Every one of those people must be identified and questioned. Exactly. Yes. Grizzly True Crime was Zayn and Ethan at the food truck earlier. Go look at food truck video 229 mark. They were not. Apparently, they were not. They were, I mean, some reports say they were at home the whole night, chilling. Others, the police, law enforcement at the press conference said that they went to a party on campus. Okay. So, yes, remember that this is to build the timeline. We're looking at what happened, you know, if anyone knows anything or saw anything that could help figure out why this brutal quadruple murder occurred, could this help? The murder doesn't take place in the surveillance footage. Nothing happens here. This is an hour to two hours before. This is at 1.43 in the morning, and they're there for about 10 minutes, and they leave at 1.53 a.m. on November 13th, 2022, a Sunday. So Saturday night going to the Sunday, early morning hour Sunday. And this is at around 1.43, as I say, to 1.53, which means they would have gotten home just before 2 o'clock in the morning if they didn't go anywhere else. And law enforcement says they were they they think they were murdered between 3 and 4 in the morning. So, okay, continuing on. Where's my pen? How are you guys doing? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I seem to have lost my pen, but that's fine. Uh, what can I get for you? Can I get just two dogs? Yeah. Yeah. We'll change views uh, now. Can I get a uh, uh, Thank you. Pork tacos. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many pork tacos would you like? Well, you know what? Just, they just come with one. Uh, it's one, but they're like six to seven ounce tacos. They're not. Sorry, I'm going to take myself off screen for a second because you see them here in the corner. The two girls are in the corner here talking. Right here. So I just left this on for a little bit so that we can see because it looks like they're whispering something to each other. I'm like, oh my, it could just be. I'm just like, oh my, where are this guy? Like, what are we going to do? And yeah, you'll see what I mean. Let's just watch the rest of it. Okay. Thank you so much as well, you guys. Thanks for the super stickers. I really appreciate it. So let me just go back just slightly here. Okay, watch here in the corner. Well, you know why? Just, uh, it's one, but they're like six to seven ounce tacos. They're not they're not like small little street tacos. I normally eat two, three is a lot for me. Stand by. And obviously the sound is coming from the food truck, from the stream there, Twitch stream. Yes. <laughs> it's not a metal apple pen, no. I'm one of those Android people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, so now got the pen out again. Now, here are the two girls, and here he is. What is he? He's like just like directly staring at them. This is so fun. I could literally like he's literally directly. Oh wait, boom, staring at them, and they're like hunched together. Um, you know, just talking to each other. And look at this guy. Like, what in the hell is he doing? Okay. Sorry, that's her. Okay, and we can remove these two dots too. So let's continue on, shall we? Let's continue on. Watch it. Watch it. One would be fine if I was getting or yeah, too. yeah. That's gonna be I almost get, two pounds I, of food. I better, I better get two. Okay, you got it. I got two pork tacos. Yeah. Done. <laughs> uh, one five cheese, one basil pesto, two pork tacos, twenty four fifty for you. Thank you. Two dumplings. Mm. 79. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do this. Hold on. If we decide, yeah. to, since we listen to Oh, people, right. people have fallen. People. So here you can see. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Here you can see um, Maddie talking to a friend. Here's a guy that uh, came up to her. Let's see if we use the pen right here. Oh, different size pen. Okay. That's, I think, Caroline, you were saying you want to know who this guy is. This is apparently a friend. It seems like someone she knows. That's the guy she walked away from. She was like, she made the, the peace sign. Sorry, I know I'm not on screen right now. Okay, hold on. Let me put myself on screen. <laughs> you guys are probably like, where is she now? <laughs> I'm right here. I just want you to see this full screen. Um, but she made like the peace sign and then walked towards him. And then um, he was there and collecting his food here. So she's with him there. Okay. 
Uh, Cameron says they seem intoxicated to me. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, if we we looked at the presentation earlier, and they did say, why is it not doing it now? There we go. That the manager of the food truck said they were a little intoxicated. Mm -hmm. Persona non grata says, watch for someone off screen to put an arm around the girl in sweats. All right. Thank you so much. I'm right here, you guys. I'm right here. Okay, so continuing on. We'll have fallen over for you. you. Sorry. I'm this guy is definitely very interested in staring at Maddie, in my opinion. That's who he's, it seems to be very focused on Maddie. What do you guys think? Okay, so carrying on. Talking to Twitch no, stream. Oh, you're so good. You. Absolutely, thank you. How are you doing? Pretty good about yourself. I'm doing extremely well. What sounds good? Uh, can I get a big burrito? Yeah. Uh, can I get a please? For the big burrito, would you like pork or chicken? Chicken. Got it. Oh, and then you said a Mountain Dew? Yes, please. Excellent. Uh, big burrito chicken and a Mountain Dew. We're going to do $11. So Maddie keeps looking at him and he keeps looking at her and it's like she's just ch chilling here but also being very aware of like what is he doing, right? I do not have bar footage. I only have footage from this um, food truck, which is outside the, the garden lounge. And I missed a comment up there. Sorry, it went by so far. Someone was saying they didn't ID and question the ex-boyfriend, but in the latest media reports, not at the press conference. After the press conference, media has reported that law enforcement says, because everybody is now speculating, this is the ex-boyfriend, this is the ex-boyfriend. They're saying, no, it's not the ex-boyfriend. They say, according to media, that they have cleared the ex-boyfriend, that he wasn't there. Okay. Ruthless says, this used to happen to me, so scary. Me too. I've honestly been in really scary situations like this. If you remember in the Gabby Petito case coverage days, I was saying with the Moa police, um, if any of them had just asked, are you, are you scared right now? Like, you know, because sometimes this type of body language, you're like, oh my word, like what is happening here? And you're making shifty eyes and you're looking a little bit uncomfortable, but people aren't really getting it. Everyone's just like chilled and unaware. But this, it seems to me like um, Maddie's a little concerned here. I could, you know, not to project. I'm not trying to project. You could just kind of feel the stress because I've been in those situations too. I think all of us have it, right? Thank you so much, CDT. Thank you, everyone. All right. Okay, so continuing on, here he is. I mean, this guy, damn. <laughs> Everyone's dressed so warmly, beanies and all. This guy over here is just like, I don't even need a sweater, okay? So... <laughs> Wow, I don't know how he wasn't freezing, showing off the new biceps. Here's Mountain Dew and order 80. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. I need two chicken burritos with extra slaw. Two chicken burritos with extra slaw. <laughs> Uh, nineteen dollars for you. I know I have a six dollars waiting for me. Would like to use it. Awesome. Let's see rewards. Ah ha ha ha. Oh fuck! I just hit your jacket. Sorry, man. Yeah. Thirteen dollars. Hell yeah. Oh, always. Um. <laughs> Uh, order 81. Thank you. I wish I could hear exactly what he said. He's definitely talking to this guy now. This guy's kind of like, hey, man, what's happening? I think he's a little curious. Oh, let's get the pain out. <laughs> right? <laughs> what happened to Why is it not like thick? You know what I mean? Hold on. Yes. This one. This guy. I don't know why my pain is thin now. I like the thick one. I'll have to see how I can set it a bit thicker. But anyway, this guy is kind of like, hey, man, what's up? And he seems to be like, oh, no, I'm just waiting for them. You know, that kind of thing. Sure. My word. Okay. So carrying on, carrying on. Extra slaw? Is that a charge? No, it's not a charge. It's just a modifier. Hello. They have Apple Pay. How's we have going? Apple Pay, right? Of course we do. Of course you have oh. Apple Pay. Yes. What happened there? Let's watch him one more time. 
Extra slaw? Is that a charge? No, it's not a charge. It's just a modifier. Hello? What? They have Apple Pay. We have going. Apple Pay, right? Of course we do. Of course you have oh. Apple Pay. Yes! <laughs> He's worshipping the guy that's not cold at all. Not cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> Janet says, now I'm way more sus of the sleepless guy. <laughs> Esmeralda says, is in that cold, barely dressed dude drug tripping? I don't know. Maybe he's just really trying to show off the progress of the gym. We just don't know. There's always one like this. <laughs> right? Karma says, is there any audio from the camera closest to them? Mm, not that I've heard when I, you know, because the Twitch, I don't know. I haven't heard that. I've just seen the Twitch stream, which is the four cameras like that, which is the one I'm showing you now. Thank you so much. Karma Justice. Okay, so carrying on. Hi, camera. I'll get okay. chicken taco. Chicken taco. You got it. I'll do the five cheese mac and cheese. Please. Okay. Look now how they talk it to each other. She's kind of like, what the hell are we doing while waiting? Okay. Please. No, I'm, no, I'm getting yours no matter what. Like, yeah. Please, please. He's waiting. Uh, we'll do two five cheese mac and cheese. Like, I'm adding two or you're making it, it's now two. Oh, Sorry. two. You're adding like, two. two. Excellent. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, anything else? Oh, uh, you got it. So I have a chicken taco and three five cheese mac and cheese. Okay. Uh, twenty-seven seventy-five. Hey, hey, hey! How many apples in the mac of the week? I really hope they questioned this guy to hear what they talked about, because he seemed initially like curious. I'm like, hey, man, what's up? Like, what are you waiting for? You know, he struck up a conversation with with that, that guy with the baseball cap on. And he's still, no matter what, he's so focused. He's super focused on the girls here. But look at him. Look at the language right now. Body language, I'm just saying. This guy's like, hey, man, what's up? Like, looking directly at him. Side profile view. You're going to have so much information, bro. Um, and he's just focused over here. But just watch what they do. Like, how they get away now. Zero, TJ. Zero. Uh, order 82. Thank you. Can I get? Can I get? We already got a five cheese mac and cheese. Wait, we got one. Oh, my God. Can I get a Macafire? You got it, man. Uh, one Macafire, nine bucks for you. Perfect, thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Let's go. That's good. Uh, 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 awesome. Okay, we're going to watch very carefully now. I'm playing it with the, Do you guys prefer it without the sound or with the sound? I'm playing it with the sound just in case we can hear anything. Let me know. The stuck on strings. A lol. Guy in gym clothes. Not at all sus. I grew up in cold climate and sometimes buddies went out and cold like that. That's why I'm saying. There's always one. In all the nights I went out, there was always one of those. <laughs> Somebody's always going to be dressed like that. Just like, damn. I mean, sometimes it might have even been me in the past. <laughs> People are like, aren't you cold? I'm like, no. <laughs> Not quite in shorts and a tank top, but maybe in a, a strappy top of sorts. I don't know. Would you look into it? Would love to hear what they're saying on that side. Well, I'm doing my best over here right now. If I find anything or if you find anything, please send it to me. Whatever I present to you guys is the very best I can do. But if there's anything else I could find, sure. I try to look into everything, you know, deep dive, all that. He could just be looking at the pickup window where they're waiting for their food. Doubt it, right? Because he didn't order food. No. Did the guy in question ever order food? Nope, he didn't. He literally didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're going to watch them here. Let's go. Order 83. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then it's all on you. Uh, I was letting go. Time to start warm the old car. It's a okay, now the sound is kind of annoying. The sound now, but just watch, okay? The sound is based on the Twitch stream, right? It's been a while since this engine started. Let's see if it starts. V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V
V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V That sound is damn annoying. I know. Mute it on your side if you want. V V V V V V I think that's someone trying to be real funny, right? You're trying to be like, ha ha ha, like we're just gonna play this. Okay, so what I can do, I can actually mute it. Uh, well, NFC, I don't have an Apple device, so it wasn't happening. Um, I was desperate. For donuts? For donuts, yes. I uh, never use like a phone NFC pay. I guess unless you count the, uh, the tap on the card. Really? Oh, we're still watching. Maddie, Kaylee, the dude's still watching here. Okay, here we go. Wait, say that again? Never use my phone until I had like a store. Oh, really? I always had my cards. Okay. It's because you're too prepared, Derek. Well, it's because I try not to forget my wallet. It's a good reason. That's smart, Derek. It's probably wallet. good to not lose your wallet. Guys! Yeah, great ticket times, honestly. Like, Luke, Tebow, really solid. Exactly, right? Gray says whoever that was is focused on Maddie. Right? He's definitely more focused on Maddie than anyone else. He's just, yeah, I agree. Okay, so we're watching. Love it. Very Check out how right, close are we to you sitting down on night, Friday nights? I mean, that was a solid rush. It's a good thing that it ended, but... This is two. This is uh, Friday, Saturday, and I wonder what she's saying to him now. She's saying to him something to him. Okay. Bro, they got you down round one, so I'm liking it. <laughs> I'm liking it a lot, guys. I guess he's gonna need extra slot a second. This bad boy. Tebow's thinking to himself. If I start slowing down on May, maybe I'll get to sit down. He's gonna try to sabotage me. I actually. And it was, one, was wondering if I was going too slow and you were going to switch it back. I was really scared of that. Like, that's what I was scared of. Nope. Yes, let that be a You track. guys know, you guys, like, the highest thing I saw was 13 minutes, which is, I'm very satisfied. You guys have worked on the truck, and Derek and I have been the ones on Grill and Mac, and we've had longer ticket times than that. Like, you're doing well. Hell yeah. All right, what I miss? Uh, reduce, reuse, lol. Yes. Um, oh, I get that gets some under. Then, like, they want their numbers to be called. Oh, okay. uh, are you doing US? Is that US? Super popular? Tomahawks, what's the size for? How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing extremely well. What's up, you? Just the death by garlic and that chicken to it. Yeah, definitely. Death by garlic. We'll add chicken to it. Anything else for you? Um, And then, can I do the five cheese? And five cheese? Yes. Can I add chicken to that? Uh, of course. We're doing uh, death by garlic with chicken. Hope you guys don't mind me just being quiet. I'm just watching like you. Guys. I'm watching like, damn, just looking at everything. Okay, we'll chat in a moment. Five cheese with chicken. Anything else? Love it. Twenty-three dollars. Do so you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever sort of payment you have on your phone, we can take. Um, order eighty-four. Thank you. Um, we do not have the scan one though. So like if you're trying to pay with cash app and you have to like scan a thing, we don't have any sort of QR crap. How are you can doing? Two, sorry, go oh, no, no. Good, excellent, sorry. Uh, what can I get you? Can I get two chicken tacos? Two chicken tacos, yeah. you got it. What big burrito chicken? Uh, 750, if that's everything for you. Or slide? Uh, yeah, slide, tap, insert, facing you with a chip, any other. I also wonder, you know, 
Is she taking a picture of a friend there? Or is she trying to take a picture of the guy? Yeah, Caroline says, I like the sound. Gives a feel for the vibe of the place. Mm -hmm. All right, am I missing anything? Yeah, where the wind blows says, just like Delphi, she got a pick of him. Maybe. I mean, that'll be interesting. Oh, my word. Look, 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 look. Order 85. Thank you. Did you see? Very clever way to get away there. It's like, okay. It's almost like they <laughs> they were talking to each other. Like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Like, as soon as we get the stuff, okay, you're going to. You're going to go, I'm going to pretend to be filming you. Let's make a reel or whatever, like on Instagram. Let's make a reel or a story or a Snapchat or something. And then they're giggling and just like filming it and off they go. And then the heavier set guy, who's also just watching them at this point, the guy, the original <laughs> guy with the, you know, that we're looking at with the cap and the hoodie, he is distracted right now. But then the other guy's like, look. There they go. And he's like, what the hell? Like the word body language is like, what the hell? You know, where are they going? And then he leaves too. But he never ordered food. He just intercepted them, stood around, watched them. And yes, mostly watched um, Maddie. Like literally like loitering around. And then as soon as they left, then he leaves too. So they left and veered off to the left. And then he seems to have gone in a different direction which I don't know then. Did he get his bicycle? Does he have a bicycle? I don't know. I'm talking about that because of the September 12th um, incident. So let's continue to look here. The chip, any other? <laughs> Order 85. Thank you. Can I do that? And you see? Okay. They're like, they're looking almost like, whoa, where'd they go? Oh, damn. Christina says, bar hookup who got ditched. He leaves right behind them. Yeah, where's the Uber driver? I don't know either. Okay. Here we go. Carrying on. Look at that. Can I get it with that? That's a whole egg slaw. Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. And then without the onion salsa. No salsa. Okay. And do you guys have sour cream or no? We do not. Can you first just tell me how you got Sorry, this is the interview of Ethan's parents now. Just want to show you one more time over here. So this was at 1.53 a.m. This guy's pointing, literally pointing at them, saying, look, they're leaving. He's like, ha, 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 what? Look. Order 85. Thank you. Can I do the big burrito? But I mean, it's really good. I'm so sorry. Can I get it? And then he rushes out also. This guy is going to get his food now. And even he, where's my pen? <laughs> Sorry, I like the pen. So as soon as they leave, this guy is like, whoop, I'm also going. He then turns this way. They seem to have run off that way. Maybe got in an Uber, I don't know. And this one here, I mean, he goes to order his food, but these two don't say goodbye to each other or anything like that either, right? I do love the pen. I do love this pen. I think there's an easier way for me to delete all the stuff. I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, it's quite odd, right? <laughs> Stefan, G's doing the hoodie dude commentary. I'm doing the hoodie dude <laughs> commentary, exactly. Okay, so there they go. Uh, that, that's oh. a whole egg, uh, um, yes, yes, you absolutely and can. And without no the onion salsa? No salsa. And do you guys have sour cream or no? Damn, and off he goes, okay? So that's that. What I do still have on here... Um, let's just take it off for a second here. This one. Okay. Just wait. I just want to show you something else. There's always things. There's always things unfolding, right? So I'm just going to close that video and I want to bring, man, so much going on. Hold on. I've got my little flat deck here. <laughs> it's not that one. This one. Yes. Okay. Here is a video. Later, County Coroner says all four students killed near University of Idaho were victims. So let's see what the coroner says. UTT. And I'm going to ask you, how, how long have you been doing this for? Um, I've been doing it for 16 years, I, and I just got reelected for another four. It feels it's just a little bit soft, right? Just a little bit soft. We'll boost that. 
So what is it that, or I guess, when did you get the call on Sunday? I got the call just a few minutes after noon that there were four homicides, but I didn't go to the scene um, because of law enforcement doing their investigation first. So I did. So this one's just five minutes long, and then we can look. Do you want to look at the interview with the parents? I know we've been here for an hour and a half already. Damn. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> so let's just look at this one. I'm going to put it on 1.25 speed so we could work through this. Here we go. I didn't actually go to the scene until about 5 or 5.30. Can you walk us through, like, for our viewers, yes. kind of the process between, like, between, between when police show up and then you guys getting the bodies and doing your examinations? Sure. Um, well, law enforcement goes through and um, looks for any evidence, um, takes videos and pictures of everything in there, and um, they'll start talking with people. So I don't really need to be there for that. I just, they can't move the bodies. I mean, the bodies have to stay um, as they were until the coroner gets sick. Just going to interrupt for a second. Christina says, am I the only mean girl who dish guys from bars? No, you're not. No, you're not. I had one. I'm just going to side, side story quickly. Once, when I was like, I don't know, 21 or something, I was at like a little club, right? And this one guy behaved just like that guy. And he was like, I, I just call that pigeon mode. If you subscribe to my other channel, you'll know why. It's just like, I don't know, just like a pigeon. that's just like chasing the female pigeon. You know, it's just like, yes, lock on, lock on. There you go. And when I left, he was so angry. He actually walked, he actually followed me out. And then he bought a red rose from someone who was selling roses outside. He ran up to me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, this is for you. So I said, oh, thank you. And I took it and I carried on walking. And then he screamed at me and said, you're such a effing man. I'm a careful with my language here on YouTube. <laughs> Brewster tease. <laughs> I'm going to say Brewster. You're a Brewster tease. He's like, effing this. He was so angry. And I'm like, oh my word. It just, it really took me by surprise that, but, and that wasn't even just, this could have been, as you say, it could have been they saw him earlier in a bar or somewhere and they're just like, no, no, no. But he definitely, this guy, even if he's not a suspect in this case, doesn't seem to handle rejection very well and definitely doesn't really read the room or doesn't care about reading the room. I like the way that at the press conference, um, they said, crime knows no boundaries. And that just made me think, yeah, of course, you know, that's a, it's a good statement though, because criminals know no boundaries. Boundaries are not important to them whatsoever. They will not read the room. They don't care about anything but themselves, especially in that moment. Okay. <laughs> May says, I thought you were 21 now, G. <laughs> not, not anymore. There, so that's, those are really what, that's what my job is. So look at the bodies. The coroner, do you guys do um, the autopsies and all that? No, we, um, some do if they're an actual medical examiner, but we have forensic pathologists and we contract with Spokane to do that. So in your experience, what is it that you saw when you showed up? Um, well, there was a lot of blood. It was, yeah, it was... It was a very sad scene with four uh, murdered college students. Um, you're rolling all four deaths on sites? Yes. Okay. And um, can you give us a manager? Yeah. Um, I believe that the press release was that they were from a um, sharp object. So, so stabbings? Yeah. I, we'll know more after the autopsies tomorrow. And do you believe this could be a Murder, or no, there are four homicides. Four homicides. Okay. Um, and when it comes to doing the investigation post autopsy, that's all on you, correct? Yes, it's my job to determine the manner and mechanism of death. Um, and then I know with so this lady will confirm did they all use the same weapon or no? Toxicology results there can often be this in Washington a delay. So do you have any idea how long it could take if those are relevant to get any type of results back on that? Yeah. Well, the toxicology reports, right, they usually take four to six weeks, sometimes longer. Um, but I, they might, um, I don't think they're going to be relevant in the actual manner or cause of death. And do we know how long between the time of death and when police found them? Approximately? No, I don't. I don't know for sure. Do we, like, do we have like any, like, could it have been hours? Could it have been a day was it maybe close like is there any sort of like time frame there um not that not that i'm aware of okay. um you said the scene was really difficult i mean is this something you had to deal with before in moscow um since i've been coroner there have been um at least two other multiple homicide scenes that i've been involved in so 
would you say this is probably the most gruesome? Oh, it's, it's hard to just single it out. It's the only one I've been to where there have been four. We're just going to watch one more minute of this, and then I'm going to show you Ethan's parents' interview, okay? Um, someone just asked. I missed it now. Someone's asking how, like, well-known are the Twitch streams from their truck, free truck. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how many. I think they've got 35,000 followers or something like that, I think. People have one scene. There have been other, the other ones Thank have you, had PT. multiple scenes. Um, and was anybody else injured, like any novices people? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I wouldn't necessarily be notified either. Okay. I didn't know if that was like because of the injuries that people might have like knowledge of. Oh, but right. Okay. Were the deceased all in close proximity to each other or were they in different rooms? Um, I don't know that I can. You see, they don't want to say exactly where they were. If anyone in the chat has heard anything else, I don't know exactly where they were. I just heard. Nancy Grace say that Ethan was discovered first and that the most blood was on the upper levels is how we just read that um, that when we read the knife article they said upper levels so maybe whoever was in the chat earlier saying the surviving victims may have been in the basement or on a lower level and this guy just went assuming like I'm just going straight up the stairs now and then just a, a, maybe you know attacked everyone on the first floor in the second floor, not the ground floor. I don't know, but yeah, imagine how he left as well. He or they, or I don't know. Did they change there? Did they, how did they clean up? Like what the hell happened? Oh my word. Okay, so we're watching another 30 seconds of this and then we're gonna look at the interview with Ethan's parents. Discuss that. That's really my next question too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Um, will we be able to get a copy of your report once it's concluded? I'm sure it'll be Oh, fine. sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay, just call. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Do you know yep. what the time frame for that is? Yes. Um, it just depends on how relevant the toxicology report is. But... Okay. So, okay. so it could be like the four six weeks. It could be, yeah. Could take a while. Could be this week. All right. So let me take this off now, and let's go back to the video here. Okay. I'm just going to add this one. <laughs> Sorry, let's just watch them leave again, and then we watch the interview with Ethan's parents. <laughs> yes. Order 85. Thank you. Um, can I do the big burrito, but I'm going to really quick, I'm so sorry. Um, can I get it with that, the chipotle uh, um, slaw? Yes. yes, yes, you absolutely and can. And without no the onion salsa? No salsa. And do you guys have sour cream or no? We do not. Can you first just tell me how you guys are doing? That's a tough question. It is a tough question. Um... So this is Ethan's parents that did an interview. That's what we're looking at now. One of the victims, he was one of triplets. And I believe he's... Um, the other two kids, I want to say one. The other two of the triplets were also at college, the same college. So sure, this must be such a shock and so devastating. I mean, it would be anyway, you know, but like twins and triplets are like super, super close, right? It's not something you ever expect to hear, ever. Like the call we took from our kids um, who were there and you just expect to outlive your kids. Honestly, I don't know. We're just trying to process it. It's not a call that you think that you're going to have to speak with the funeral home directors and the FBI. I do have some background music, just like ambient music on this. Okay, in case you were like, wait, wait, wait where's the music coming from? <laughs> it's on the background here. Yeah, FBI and have it hit national news. I mean, I don't, we're more concerned, you know, Ethan was a triplet and that's a big thing. There's a couple of things. Ethan was a triplet and that's the most important thing for us because we have these other two kids that are very impacted by this um, and they need to be lifted up and cared for. Um, and I think the other thing that's important to us is the reason why we've agreed to do this is number one, you're local. And number two, it's important for us to get Ethan's story out. We don't really want anybody else representing him. And it's hard to have people speaking on his behalf. So we think it's best for us to do this. And you did say, of course, that he was a triplet and looking through the pictures, he said 
like you said, they seem to be always together. I mean, they all went, do they all go to high school and then college together also? Elementary, yeah. high school, everything, college, they all went to the same university. Yeah, I mean, everything. We travel, we play, we hike, we, everything we do is all of us together. I mean, we're a pretty tight family. Did you say that they were the ones that called you about this happening? Yeah. Yes. And then are you guys all back together now? We are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in our home in Northern Idaho, our summer home. We're gonna okay. be here for a couple of days just to regroup a little. Yeah. And can you just tell me a little bit about Ethan? I think I was told he was very athletic. I think he played was it basketball and tennis or basketball. Just tell me a little about his interest. What did Ethan like to do? Anything. <laughs> this must be so hard for the family to do an interview like this. Like, I mean, it's so, so new and so raw, this news. And it's like, tell us about Ethan. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying it must be really difficult to do these interviews. They were so strong to do it, right? One day they did do a press conference and I've uh, today in today's stream, if you missed the beginning, please check out the replay because I summarized it for you guys so that we don't have to watch the whole thing. Otherwise we'd be here for three hours. We're already here for an hour 40. <laughs> but uh, it is, yeah, bullet point for you, summary, everything they said. So the presser happened yesterday. He played. You name it, he played it, literally. Yeah. I think we just watched a thing from the university, spike ball champion, volleyball champion. I mean, right? I mean, he just literally would play and do anything. He he played club soccer for years. He was played, you know, we traveled, all of our kids are athletic and we traveled every weekend and he just, he was involved in anything. He just literally, he was, I don't know. He just loved to play everything. He did. All he loves sports. sports. I mean, our like our love language with him was sports. I'm just going to pause it right there. I forgot to show you guys this. Uh, this is the, the house. I still want to put the little Google man there in our map time. This is the house. So there's three levels. So ground, one, two. Or I don't know if in America you guys say one, two, three. I believe... Ethan was found on this middle level. And I don't know if the other three victims were found in the upper level or if, uh, you know, if Zaina, Ethan's girlfriend that lives here, if she would have probably then been on the same floor, but maybe in the room, I don't know. And maybe when he entered the house, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they all stayed. We don't know this for sure. Just like maybe he went straight up the stairs and he's trying to get to speculating now. Uh, Maddie, maybe they were on the upper floor. I don't know, but this is the house. This is one, one, two, two. You've seen all the pictures and everything. This is what it looks like. Um, let's just zoom out and show you the area a little bit. Okay, like that. Going down here. All right. Um, Christina asked only one door. There's only this door here, but then there's those like patio doors. Remember we saw that on the pictures as well, the sliding doors on the other side of the house. So that, I worry about that, those sliding doors. But yes, they say what the police said in the press conference, when they arrived, the door was still open, but yet Kaylee's sister said that they locked their doors. So, you know, I don't know if then the surviving roommates opened the door for the police, I'm not too sure. We don't know the, all those details, but this is, yeah, the house. So let me just go back to this. Literally watched, um, I follow like NFL football so that I can literally have a conversation with Ethan because I could, you know, send him a text message and, you know, that was, a, a you know, I don't know, just everything. I don't know that and country music. I mean, yeah. you know, I, he's, he's funny. He literally, I, we were having, trying to have a conversation really quickly about our favorite mem memory. We can't come up with one. I mean, he literally lit up every room, every, everybody. He was friend to all. Um, 
he just, he was an incredible human. I mean, one of mm, This is so painful, right? Um, Hawkeye Seneca says there was also a dog there fun later. Um, Kaylee's sister said that they did all the right, they did the right thing, right? They used the buddy system, they got an Uber. So she said, she said in the way they used the buddy system, they got an Uber, they got food, they went home, they let the dog out for potty, and then locked their doors. That's what Kaylee's sister said uh, to Inside Edition, which we saw some of that, unless it's, this, I think it's after this as well, in this clip here. Um, so, yeah, so there was a dog there, and so there was also a dog found there later, I would assume so. That also, I don't know, that whole situation, like does the dog, you know, sleep somewhere else, or was also somewhere around the house, I'm not too sure. Okay, so continuing on. A kind, popular, I mean, not that that matters, but I don't know, I think we believe that if you literally ask anybody in his life, anybody, they would tell you the same exact thing. I mean, I literally, I just got an email from his counselor at college and he was just said, I love that kid the minute I met him. He literally walked in my office last week and it was just simply to say hi. He had a huge smile, the whole, like, you know, the feeling inside of the office changed just because he walked in. He always had something funny to say. That's been something we've talked a lot about. I mean, he was definitely the comedian of the three kids. Mm -hmm. He kept us all, I mean, we have the funniest videos of him. I just. He's the kind of kid that everybody wanted to be around. You yeah. know, he just, he was just a good kid. He's a I believe the dog is alive. Heavenly Clouds is asking. I believe there's two surviving, two, vi two not victims, two roommates that were in the house, um, survived, and, and the dog as well, I believe, is alive. But one thing is, we don't know if the other two roommates, I wonder... I wonder, you know, were they there the whole time? We don't know that, do we? From everything I've heard from the press conference, I don't think we know that they were there that whole night. What if they came in at noon? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. Okay, carrying on here. Good kid. That kind to all. Didn't deserve what happened. No. Oof. And didn't, um, wasn't he going to school to study? It was something to do with sports, wasn't it? Sports management i think i don't i don't know the technical title of it but yeah i mean that was you know that was we told him he should go be a teacher and a coach i mean he was incredible the way he worked with kids and he refereed youth basketball on the weekends in mount vernon um it, you know he i don't know he just he touched a lot of people i mean it's the amount of support that we seen so far has been incredible you guys are talking about uh, ring cameras and so if you're in the area and you're a neighbor or around that area even between the food truck area and uh their home yeah maybe if you caught something on camera check your cameras it could help law enforcement a lot right our neighbors, our everybody. I, it's incredible. I mean, we have messages from people that just are like, I knew him and he was incredible. Our daughter knew him and all he talked about, all she talked about was how great he was. I mean, it truly, it's a huge loss. We, we, we were at Parents Weekend last weekend with them and Jim and I left that weekend. And as we pulled out of Moscow, we literally were like, we've done it. We, we've literally done it as parents. We've created three incredible humans that will go on and have something great to offer to this um, world. Honestly, all three of them. We literally, we literally had a conversation that we will no longer have to worry about these kids because we did it. Yeah. Thank you, Seashell. Seashell, almost said C Rachel. Seashell, when it comes to the other two roommates, y'all should try to remember they're college students who drink, they were probably passed out. Yes. I would speculate the same. We were saying that earlier. What if they were passed out? Right? 
And if they lived on the ground floor, what if they got in later and just went to bed and didn't see what had happened on the upper floors? You know? Karma justice. I'm pretty sure it's in the presser. The survivors heard rustling and got out of bed to lock their doors but thought nothing else of it. That I did not hear in the presser, so I'll have to go listen again. I've listened to it twice. I didn't hear that. I think it was from one of the articles I read, though. And someone was asking about someone with a mask. I also remember reading something like that, but that was in the initial articles that came out, so I'll look for it as well. Hold on. I'm going to have a look where the hell that comes from. I think I read it on Facebook. That's probably where it's from. They say... Oh, that was previously. It's like from a June article, something about the masked man. I don't think it's got to do with this case. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you so much for that. Okay. Carrying on? Possibly, you know, people can support you guys right now. It's an interesting situation because in all of your hardships in life, you know, whatever you're going through, there's always a, like an outcome. Like um, you, you, you get through it, right? Like... I don't know, whatever it is. This is something you wake up and you realize it's never going to go away. And, and it's, it's, it's a very different, it's a very different. 2 a.m. is a dark hour. I can tell you that <laughs> we're all. And I guess just during this time, like I said, you guys seem very tight knit. Are you just like, what's going forward look like for you? I know that's a hard question right now. I know it seems like you guys are really there supporting each other through this. I think one of the first things that like when we got Maisie and Hunter, um, one of the first things, I mean, uh, that came to me is that our life has literally taken a left turn and I don't know how that's going to affect us, but we will not let this sink us or sink our kids because if anything, they have to go on and... <laughs> shiny things bright light on their own mm -hmm. I think that's the questions I have right now unless there's anything else you guys wanted to add kids do you want us our kids are here watching do you guys have anything you want to add Hunter Maisie mm -hmm. he was their number one and that's going to be a hard loss for both of our kids both Maisie and Hunter I mean he he was the he was kind of each of their number one. So um, it's it's going to be hard just for the three of them to, without him to, now that they're two, you know, we've gone from three to two and it's going to be hard for the two kids to yeah. figure out how to live life. When you've spent 20 years as three, you know, and now they have to figure out how to be two mm, yeah. and carry, you know, I don't know. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, it's important for us. I mean, the reason we've agreed to do this is there's some misinformation out there and that's been hard for us. And that's why we, uh, as a family talked about it and agreed to do this because the things that are being said are a hundred percent, not true. There's not drugs involved. There's not some weird love triangle. Ethan was, just was stayed the night at his girlfriend's house who was one of five girls who lived in the home mm -hmm. um and it's just important that that people let the criminal part of it try to work itself out and that yeah. that these kids these these all of the kids were just really good great kids mm -hmm. so i mean the light of the school i mean everybody knew them one of them, I believe, was his girlfriend was also killed. Is that correct? Yes, Zana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were in the same room. And I think that's all the questions I have. But I really do appreciate you guys sharing more about Ethan, so we can understand more about him and share more about him with you know Western Washington and the community here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. I uh, do also want to show you. Let's just go back to this. I just want to look at this quickly where we see this angle. Wait. This one? Okay. We're looking. And then I just want to see where that trash can is because I can't see that. And then she leaves. Just wait. 
Wait, go back. Sorry. Let's go play this for a second. Just quietly. Okay. They say it's near the garden lounge where this food truck is. So it might not be exactly here. It does look like the bus stop there behind them. Yep. Okay. Okay. So if I now add this one to the stream. We're almost done. We're almost done for today. Don't worry. If there's any new details, don't worry. I'll be covering it. I just don't want to go on and on and on. But uh, here, this is the, the garden lounge. So if I just go a little bit this way, a little bit more. Okay. It seems like it, the food truck, it seems like. I might be wrong. But it looks like to me, tell me if I'm wrong, is around here. And we could just see in the corner... Ooh, where's my pen? <laughs> Sorry. Just like pen time. In the corner, it looks like we could have seen this in that video that we just looked at. Let me show you. Wait. Let's put this on here. Do you see it? In the corner there, it looks like glass reflecting there. Look, look, and then they go. I'm not sure. But it looks like it a little bit. So it could be here. And in that way, then they, they, they walk this way. Go there, and then he goes that way. That's what it seems like, right? <laughs> you guys are like, do go on. <laughs> do go on. Yeah, I think back before that bench. I see the, oh, yeah, 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 the bench. Okay, good job, good job. Yeah, like this bench. So it's normally around here, this garden lounge. Okay, so let's go a little bit this way. This way. Turn it around. Turn it around. Am I, am I facing the right way too? I wish, the, I wish Google Man could get on <laughs> the sidewalk. It's sidewalk time, Google man. Ah, there's a bench. Okay, so maybe it was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. There is a bus bench. Very nice. Now, no one in this, this is map time. No one's um, looking sus over here, are they? <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, delete my little art over here, which means if the food truck was around here, here's the bench. We see them leaving. They go like, laughing around this way and kind of whoosh, and then he walks this way too and then seems to go to the right is that correct that's what it looks like right i've got it now <laughs> look at all my doodles are you guys feeling proud <laughs> i love the pen and the doodles <laughs> okay so yeah that's what it looks like it looks like wait that's an eraser we want the pen pen please yes okay so they walk this way and slip away there. Maybe the Uber was waiting here or somewhere around here. We don't know. And he was like standing around, standing, standing around. And then he's like whoosh, also gapping it and then went right. That's what it looks like. Okay. And I'll show you again now. Just hold on. Let's go show you this one. Ah, there's that bench. Okay. It's a little bit different. But there, there he goes. There he goes. Damn. Hmm. All right. Sorry for those of you who are late. Don't worry. The replay, there's lots of information we shared today. Um, let's find Idaho students. I want to see if there's any updates here. Top story two hours ago. Food truck video. That's what they're showing on CNN. Yep. They, that's just what they're showing. Same as what we're showing here now. Two other roommates were home during... So they say they were home. That's from today. Okay. So hold on one second. Oh, man. Sorry. Continue to the site. Go, go. <laughs> it's like... Wait. I want to just bring this over. Boom. Oh, damn. I've got to take all my, all my drawings away. Otherwise, it's like, what is going on here? Okay. So what do they say here? Let's just see. Yeah, at a press conference held on November 16th, the police confirmed that two additional roommates were at home during the November 13th slaying of four University of Idaho students. James Fry, the city of Moscow, Idaho's police chief, said the two additional roommates were home at the time of the other four's deaths but were not injured or taken hostage. At the press conference, Fry said the killings happened in the early morning hours, but the police were not called until around noon. Fry was careful to say the two surviving roommates were not witnesses and added that they were still there when the police arrived later that day to investigate. 
The four victims were identified as Ethan Chapin, 20, of Conway, Washington, Madison Mogan, 21, of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, Zaina Kernodal, 20, of Avondale, Arizona, and Kaylee Goncalves, 21, of Rath Drum, Idaho. Okay. So, also, let me just quickly see if I can show you this. Um, I just don't want to show anything. You see, like, I can't show you that. I might have to do that later. It's like a members-only stream. Looking at all the Instagram accounts, I don't want to just put it out there now because I know how it goes on the internet. Unfortunately, people are like, there we go. On the Instagram accounts, you could see the other two roommates. You could see guys that are with them. You could see everything if you want to look at it, but uh, I won't be showing it right now. All right. Kaz says she's definitely taking a picture of him while pretending to take a selfie. Um, I mean, she could have also been communicating the whole time they were the Uber, right? Talking to the Uber. I don't know, but maybe. You never know. Sorry, I don't know why my light is flashing around like that. Okay, I think we've we've covered a lot today. So let's leave it at that for today. Two hours, damn. Sorry, replay watchers. If you're a replay watcher and you made it to this point, holy moly, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Please hit the thumbs up and share this so that other Grizzlies get to see this. And if there's anyone who is not a Grizzly yet and wants to subscribe and be over here as part of this wonderful community, then if you share it, then they'll know about it too and they can come on over and subscribe. All right. So... Sorry, I'm just looking what you guys are saying here. There was one other video that I just, if I could just find it just for just a second, just hold on. I just want to see where it was. They actually interviewed the food truck guy. I just can't remember where it is now. Hold on. Um, it's not that one. We're looking for it. It's not from the presser either. Ooh, is it this one? Could be this one. Wait. Find the food truck guy. Find the food truck guy. <laughs> yes. Okay, I found him. Here we go. I'm not too sure why he's smiling so much. But here we go. He described their interaction with me. One of the blondes was just a little bit more cheery and kind of bouncing around a little bit more. And then one was like standing there and doing the hello, how are you? And goes through the interactions. And normally, that's pretty normal. In most of our groups, there's people that are more energetic and people that are managing the energetic people. Joseph told me he felt incredibly sad when he learned the news about the girls he had just seen the other night. I hope they find the person. I hope they get the person. Okay, so there was a little interview with the food truck manager, dude, the Twitcher, Twitch streamer. All right, thank you, Lorraine. Lawrence, excellent and thorough job. Thanks, G. That felt a lot more like me, huh? Yesterday we did a stream looking at all the updates in the Michael Vaughn case, Quentin Simon, and in this case, but today was a deep dive and I really like these so much. So thank you so much for being here with me for over two hours now. Really appreciate it. I am going to very soon. I wanted to do it today, but I'm not too sure. We've been here for a while. On my other channel, GNT, I would like to go over the Daryl Brooks sentencing because it was as ridiculous as the whole trial. Like, oh my word, I feel so bad for the victims and their families and the judge for dealing with that guy. Thankfully, he was sentenced to life in prison. It's just brilliant. Like a long ass sentence, never getting out. So good. So we'll do that over there on GNT very soon. That's my second channel. So if you don't know about it, check it out. I'm sure the mods are sharing it here as well. I appreciate you so much. Thank you to everyone who became members today. Make sure you check out the members only playlist and the community tab because last night, yesterday, we did a stream where we got a little snarky. <laughs> We looked at um, the Wanderers in the Michael Vaughn case. We we looked at all their social media stuff. So, yeah, and and we were just I'm putting my email there. It's grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com for everyone asking how to get hold of me. Everything is on grizzlytruecrime.com, my website, everything. The membership stuff, Patreon, whatever. It explains everything. You can get it all there. Richard says, it was an honor to be here again with the old Grizzlies are the best. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Richard. Caroline says he smiles because that gets wired into you when facing the public all the time. Maybe. That's true as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. Deanda says, thank you, G, all the details and map time. Also, thank you to everyone who sent me PayPals yesterday. You guys are so sweet and bought me a coffee. It keeps me going. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, we were doing some Sarah Snark. <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing the website. I will see you guys again very soon.
you know, there's lots of cases to cover, lots of things to do. Um, I appreciate it when you are here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me just see this. Uh, P PJ, aka Rotan says, please bring the yellow pen for Daryl Brooks. I will. I will be bringing the yellow pen and the gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. So if I have energy later, we'll do it there later. Otherwise, we'll do it there this weekend sometime or something like that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Please stay safe, especially if you're in the area. But even beyond, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Stay vigilant. As I say, I'm hyper vigilant. I'm like, what, 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 what? <laughs> All the time. I don't know if that's recommended, but rather safe than sorry. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye.